Hi guys, this is Tracy the Diva with Inside Pool Magazine. Hope everybody's having a great time. I have my co-host here, Nick DeLeon, the Nikon Kid. We also have a special guest tonight, and this is Justin Martin out of Wilmington, North Carolina. He was recently in Puerto Rico, uh, kicking it back with some of those pros. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Justin, he was yeah. recently yeah, we had a great Puerto time. Rico, uh, kicking it back with some of those pros. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Justin, he was recently in Puerto Rico, kicking it back with some of those pros. Justin, he was recently in Puerto Rico, kicking it back with some of those pros. Are we getting feedback? I'm getting a double echo. Yeah, me too. I'm having a good time. It's on your end, Diva. I'm getting a double echo. <laughs> what is that? It's on your end, Diva. Do you guys have extra screens open? Uh, I don't. What is that? It's on your end, Diva. Do you guys have extra screens open? I'm pulling everything. Uh, I don't. What is that? It's on your end, Diva. Do you guys have extra screens open? There, did that work? Yeah. yeah sorry, okay. guys. All right, sorry, guys, for watching. Um, We just had a little... You know, technical difficulties, but um, <laughs> our lady, the diva, has figured it out. So um, let's get back to Justin with um, the questions. That, um, was One asked. more time, Justin. Oh, yeah. So we had a great time in Puerto Rico. It was my first time. Um, it was interesting. You know, I know it's a U.S. territory, but things were quite different down there. Uh, I mean, not to really get into the politics too much, but just the, you know, the whole vaccination status, like you had to have, uh, you had to have a vaccination card or a negative test to go inside of any public establishment. But uh, we had, a, we had a great time. We were really too busy to enjoy any of, you know, the things that people would go to vacation for. In Puerto uh, Rico. You're there to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically, when you got on the plane and boarded, since you know Puerto Rico is part of the United States or a territory, um, you didn't necessarily have to be vaccinated to get on the plane to enter into Puerto Rico. No, so uh, you didn't have to have a vaccination to to enter or to get into the establishments. But if you didn't have a vaccination, you had to have a negative PCR test within 72 hours of, you know, the date of trying to enter any establishment. Right. Right. So coming we back have, into the United States, did you have any issues coming back into the United States? Did you no. and uh, Katie have to quarantine? No, no, it was, it was actually easier to get get back than it was to get in. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool, cool. Nick, do you have any questions for Justin Martin? Um, I'm actually um, a little familiar with him. He was out here in Arizona last year, right? Right, yeah. Okay, so um, no, I mean, other than um, his Fargo is definitely higher than mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's great to see um, more young players out playing and not just um, – hitting the local, hitting the, the top um, player, like, events with all the top champions. So it's right. good. It's good to see, you know, a lot of people have that strive of, like, not going out and just sticking where they're at. So it's just it's a totally different level of playing field and getting out and playing and testing your game against the top players. Absolutely. So, so it's good. It's good to see it, all right? And it's awesome. Oh, I appreciate Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Uh, before we move forward, but Melinda Mike said that if we want to bring him on or if we want to get him on later, um, he's he's up for it. So, well, if he wants to come in now, he's more than welcome to. Do you know how to send the link? No. Um, you want uh, you want me to you want to message him on Facebook? Tell him I will send him the invite through Facebook, sir. Are you familiar with the Mr. Knit, Justin? Yeah, I am. Uh, we've, met, we've met a handful of times.
<laughs> Mr. Nip. <laughs> I'm making him a jersey. I'm making him a jersey. It's gonna on the back of it. It's gonna be a, the Mr. Nip. What's the story behind that one? So, this is a funny story. Last year, um, I've been dealing with him online, and I first finally got to meet him. At the Texas Open last year. And right. we kind of teamed up and did the Calcutta. Um, I forgot who we were bidding on, but I told him, hey, I go, I got this. I go, I got I got our guy. You just chill because he was doing all the bidding. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, the guy's all, hey, 50, going once. I go, okay, 100, you know, 150, 200, 350. And he went to go get a drink. It came back like five minutes later and we're at 350. And, you know, the guy is announced, he's all, hey, it's a steal. This guy should be going for like 600, 700. I'm like, oh, my God. I go, please, we don't want to split that much money. So so we're sitting there. He's all, going once at 350. You guys need to get on it. And then going twice. And Melina Mike stands up. He's like, dude, 450. And I'm like, we're bidding on the same person. I go, we already have him for 350. He's all, well, I was just trying to make a statement. I go, you're paying that hundred dollars, and he's all, no, 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 no. He's all, he's all worse. I go, no, no, no. I go, you knew who we were bidding on. You went to go get a drink. You came back and sat next to me, and you bid an extra hundred dollars. I go, you're taking that out of your pocket. <laughs> yeah, and then he was trying to get me to do it, so I was like, you're such a nit, and that's where it all came from. <laughs> so, Poor Molina Mike, you guys are awful. Yeah, but he's a blast. Justin, question. What do you think about Earl being replaced? Oh, I mean, you know. I was you went really, through it going to Puerto Rico, so I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the guidelines or whatever their, their rules may be a, a little bit different, but, you know, politics aside, I was I was really excited to see Earl play. Um you know, I I also think it's pretty evident that that there should be alternates. You know, that that should you know make the trip as well. I think this is evidence of that. But you know, Jeremy's a great player and capable. So I'm kind of excited to see how Jeremy. I performs. agree. I agree totally. Nick, I mean, he even said in his interview, you know, after he um, after they won the team. Um, event that he was really nervous and very like you know but I mean he made a he made a really good out for being you know four inch pockets and different colored cloth and the conditions you know because he's normally on the sidelines so right. he kind of got forced into playing and um, I'm pretty sure he held his own he just needs to get comfortable and once he's comfortable I feel that his game will come along especially in the doubles because that's feel I feel like that's where you're more unlikely you're going to win and then yeah. in the singles like that your team your doubles put together team like um david and um them and shaw played great i mean they were both in the same sync together you know and they played really good other than a couple of mistakes by the u.s team right i mean and it was a short race you know things can like a few roles that go one way or another can really you know be a deciding factor like uh the the break was also not really cooperating very well today either. So no, but I also was talking to um Miss Diva that um with the tighter pockets. It, yeah. When you go tighter pockets, it's not just your play that that you have to be more accurate with and more precise with like ball pocketing, but on your break you're going to make less balls because the pockets are shrinking. Well, normally where those balls hit to go in, they're actually hitting the points or they're hitting a different angle where they're, they're not going to fall like on a four and a half inch pocket. Yeah, I agree. And Neil's brought up a good point too. Um, it's the first day and you know, the balls are being racked on brand new cloth and basically, you know, the, the table is not trained as much as it will be on towards day the end three. Of the day. Yeah. And that's what we experienced, not that I switched subjects, but when we played the Predator event in Arizona, it was the same thing. The balls were not – the 10-ball, playing racking 10-ball, even with the, the template rack or whatever they had, 
the balls weren't reacting because of the, the clock being new. So once it, we got broken in by day two, by day three, then it started reacting differently. And I think that's what is going to happen. Right, yeah, the balls were much easier to rack, and you were able to, you know, just get more towards a, uh, a more repeatable action, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, Diva didn't watch a lot of it, but um, what did you think about um, USA's performance over um, Europe's? Me? Well, you didn't watch that much, but um, No, I was, unfortunately, I was involved in a many of my other endeavors that i'll have to do during the day because <laughs> yeah. i thought i thought the team event was a was a really important um um point to like to get right off the bat especially with jeremy jones just adding to the mix right absolutely it um it gives them momentum once they get started i feel especially for um chris and tyler at that moment for them to get that that point for the united states that definitely did something for the boys in general especially the younger ones on the team yeah you know you have the the rookies like skyler and shane van boning that are they're used to that grind and all of the noise and everything else and chris and and Steyer, they're still learning to deal with that and i think they did a fantastic job personally no i think they did too i mean it's just the meshing and the, um, getting comfortable you know with the the different colors cloth and the four inch pockets so right oh, yeah. and then there's that i mean Maybe. i've like never seen the uh the gray felt on anything live before that was a first for me and it was it was different definitely. no for sure it was definitely different uh sorry guys my phone was about to die it's okay, Justin. We're not going to keep you much longer. This was a, a rough test run for me and the Nikon kid here. We'll get much better with it, but we appreciate your time. And we look forward to yeah, watching absolutely. you on your tour. Where are you heading next, I sir? I appreciate it. Um, I'll be headed to Florida this weekend for the Mutual Classic, and then uh, it'll be a little break in between now there's actually a new year's event here in our hometown so we'll be playing that and then we'll be off to the derby so fantastic i look forward to seeing you at the derby this year justin that'll be round two for us yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah have a good one, time, both know. of us to get some sleep yeah and thanks for jumping on and yeah, we no appreciate problem, you doing this for us justin and good luck in florida and i will see you at derby city all right, you guys have a good night. Thanks for having me. Thank right, you. you. Did Melina Mike ever um, reach uh, get back to you? I have not. I sent him the invite, sir, but no Melina Mike just yet. No. All right. But we may just sign off for the evening, and we will pick this back up tomorrow. Uh, what do you think the spread's going to be tomorrow? Um, that's going to be that's going to be tough because um. <sighs> It's man, it's all about comfort, you know. Like USA started off really good, and then Shane um, had a couple um, bad scratches that cost him. Yeah. And of course, you know, Filler making that snap on the um, the break after you know Shane makes an incredible out to tie it up one one. Right. So. Well, I mean, when you think about it, those two um, powerhouses. Th that's going to be the talk of the town, really. I mean, Filler is hanging the lights out. <laughs> and the man's on fire. And uh, Shane is just have to dust yourself off and pick yourself up and keep going. Yeah, I know. Correct. And that's the same thing with Skyler and um, J um, Jeremy Jones losing right. the, the doubles. Because, I mean, Shaw and David played played great. Flawlessly. And, yeah. I heard. Flawlessly. Yeah. I mean, Shaw... Um, went, went with this for this three rail kick, clipped the one ball, made the eight ball on the side. Um, so they're playing really good. It's just that you can tell that the the, the table is really sliding and um, accepting balls really well. It's just that once you get into day two and possibly day three, the table is going to play a lot tougher. Right. I'm, I'm assuming those lights don't help much either. 
with uh, all the lighting that's bouncing off that table, it's pretty much going to heat the table up and it's going to make it worse. Yeah. So it's just going to be, it's just getting comfortable. You know, Jeremy Jones, I feel that it's going to be very important for him to at least steal a point or two um, tomorrow or in day three. I um, think Jeremy will catch his gear. I think yeah, he'll find his saying, spot. Yeah. He'll find his sweet spot. It's He's got to get those jitters off. Yeah, because that's what he said. He said that even in the team, he's all very, very nervous and very, like, you know, it's nerve-wracking being out there. But, you know, he got out on a tough out, you know, and it was really good to see. And you saw, you know, Shane Van Boeing and Skyler and Chris and Tyler all giving him high fives and, like, you know, smiling. So it's good to see their captain, you know, win a game or two here and there. And then once he kind of gets rolling, it'll kind of be back. Right. The morale seems like it's there. And as long as we keep cheering and try to – have some type of i don't know i just feel like everybody's being so negative about it and i understand that it hit the united states hard that earl was taking off uh was removed from the team um but there's i don't know what the government rules are in the uk but i will try to get some of that information from uh mark or raj handal if i can get in touch with raj and find out exactly what it entailed for him to be removed. You know, I get it. It's a government thing. It's nothing to do with match room. And uh, we just need to learn to be patient and give Jeremy his, his chance. No, I, I, no, I, I agree. But I mean, there's nothing you could do. Cause like, let's for, say for instance, that they wanted to bring in, you know, let's just say Oscar Dominguez. Cause he's been on the cup before. Right. Right. But, there's a four, there's a there's a there's so many days you have to quarantine. You can't just fly in and and then play, right? Like right. you have to be quarantined with their laws on um, um in Europe, right? So right. Um, it's just one of those things that they got. It just uh, kind of got hit with a bad roll, and you know Jeremy jumped up, and it's just everybody's going to pick everybody up, and that's what you have to do in a team event. They're very team event is totally different than playing singles or or doubles. Right. Like I feel like when you have more than three or four or five people on a team, you're all, you guys all have to pick each other up when the other person falls, you know? Right. Like, it's just like anything else. You got to be family for just a couple of days. No, correct. Um, I mean, like even with um Tyler and, and Tyler and Chris, you know, Chris missing that two ball, you know, you saw Tyler over there talking to him, you know, you just have to, you know, just don't let it get to you. You know, everybody's going to miss, especially on the four inch pockets. Right. Just like Jason Shaw said in the interview, everybody's going to miss. Everybody says, oh, that ball should have never went in because the pockets are too big. Well, now they're tighter. Now you're still going to see some go in because of the newer felt. But as the de- as the time goes, the, with the table being played on so many so many more hours and so much more time, the table's going to play tougher. So those pockets are going to get tougher. It's not going to just give like new felt is going to So get. as it progresses, it's just going to get more difficult. Correct. And you have to be more accurate. I um, have a question from one yes. of our commentator, uh, from one of our chat people here. Penguin wants to know what are what is your opinion, Nick, being a professional player on the gray cloth, and will it be more difficult to adjust to? Like you said, it's going to get worse as the time progresses. But what is your opinion on the color of the cloth? Does it help for visual um, purposes? I've or never played on gray. Yeah, I've never played on gray felt. The only thing I have experience with is going from green to blue or blue to green. It's very difficult when you go to a bright table, which is blue, and then you go to a dark green table or the excuse me, the old felt. Um, it's very difficult to see the ball. So I think the lighter the cloth, the better you can see the balls. And I think that's what was behind match room and everybody trying to um, for change broadcasting it up. purposes is for viewing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that too. But um, the players, I mean, from what they said, they, they think it, it's good for um, their eyes to see the ball better. But um, I'm not a fan of it. I mean, I haven't played on it. But, um, you know, everybody's stuck with playing in the position, whether you like the, the size of pocket or you right. like the color of the felt. You know, it could be pink. You know, like we have to play. <laughs> you know, they, they, each team has to play on it. So right. they're just getting used to it. From what I heard, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, their uh, practice tables are color-coordinated for each team. Like, um, 
the Euro team has blue felt and the Americans have um, like a red felt. I'm not sure if that's true or not. That's a rumor that I heard. I will try to check in on that. Would that cause for you, would that cause problems going from practice table on one color going to the event with it being another? I feel that the only problem that you'll have is your eyes adjustment wise. If you're practicing on a uh, blue, like for instance, on a red cloth, if that's what it is, right? Their practice table is red going from red to gray. It's going to be better. I, in my opinion, like you're going to hit balls on whatever color felt you want to, but when you go to a brighter table or a lighter color, I feel that it's always easier to see the, the edge of the ball better. Right. Right. Um, going back to, um, what we were talking about earlier with going into the country, do you have any, um, Mr. Uh, Nikon kid is getting married here in a couple of weeks, which is the yes, reason why he looks <laughs> in his attire. He's been working on the house all week. Um, you're planning on going to the Philippines. Are the restrictions just as hard in the Philippines as they are in the UK? Is this something that's worldwide or is it just the UK that's having that issue? I think everybody just has their own rules. Each like, I know, yeah, have their own country. Country. Correct, correct. Because um, like the Philippines, I know they had a, a, a complete lockdown. When you go in, you have to be quarantined for 10 days. Stuck in a what hotel, happened? can't do anything. And then after that 10 days, I guess you get tested or whatnot. Um, we're just waiting for whatever um, to get lifted so we can go and I can meet her family and everything else. But I just feel that if everybody has their own like rules on how it, how it goes. So um, it just, it just, I don't know if he didn't know or if he didn't he, like, he didn't read the rules or what happened with, um, with Earl, but it just sucks that, you know, he's uh, from what Shane says that he's been practicing nonstop and um, getting ready. And they did those awesome interviews talking about his game back in the day and how it was so great and like how they looked up to him. And then this happens, it's just a, a, a curveball, And then now Jeremy Jones has to fill those shoes. So. Right. It's very unfortunate after all the controversy of having Earl on the team to begin with. And then here comes another knife and already open wound for Mr. Strickland. Um, I'm curious to know if he's going to have to stay in the UK for the whole 10 days, or is he going to be able to fly back home? Um, I, that's a good question because we were talking about it earlier with my buddies and we were talking about it and I'm like, man, I go, is he stuck there in a hotel with nothing? Like he can't go out. He can't do anything because he's quarantined because of the person on the flight. Uh, yes. Penguin. Um, Penguin asked, will we be able to give updates on scores, etc., over the course of the event? Nikon kid, Mr. Nick DeLeon will be, uh, running the helm on that penguin so if you go to nick's um professional page and he will give you uh that link for that then you will be able to to get any of those results sir or ma'am yeah it's my, like it's my the, uh, facebook fan page it's um nick de Leon, nikon kid and i've been posting everything since day since it started um this morning and um just play by play pretty much like the inning score of the team event. Um, it was great to see, you know, like I said, um, Jeremy Jones get a win, you know, and his team was really stoked and excited to see that. So um, I've been trying to update as much as possible and then we're doing this as well. So uh, we get to talk and hopefully some fans jump on and they ask some questions or want to talk about a topic that happened or um, something like that. I mean, I know Tyler made a hell of a, um, a one ball jump shot, um, with the safe that they played on him today during doubles. And unfortunately, Chris, you know, um, missed the two ball in the side pocket, but it's tighter pocket. So it's, it's, it's very, very tough. So what we would like to let you guys know, any, anybody that comes into the chat, if you want to ask us questions, we will be more than happy to answer them. If you have questions that we cannot answer at this time, we will try to answer those at a later date. We want to make sure that we're interacting with anyone that comes into the into the area so that uh, we know that we're trying to give back to our to the fans that love the game of pool. 
that's the reason for us doing this podcast to begin with. Um, we want to include you guys so that you know that we do care because we do care without you guys. We don't have anything to do when it comes to pools. So we need you guys to um, let us know what we're doing wrong. If there's something that we can do better, that's what we're here for. Penguin says, I love to travel for work. So I was hoping you guys would be, um, oh, I'm sorry. I travel for work. So I was hoping you guys would be live and able to update. I can listen to it in my car. We'll do what we can for you, Penguin. Yeah, we're trying to go live after the um, each day of the cup. So um, talk about, you know, what you guys want to talk about, what we um seen today and what the struggle like Kachi. I was really shocked on his um, performance today. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everybody has those bad days. Everybody has those bad moments. But he had some really critical errors against um, uh, Tyler and Chris today. And I was very shocked at some of the missing um, balls that he he missed today. But, God. you know, I mean, a champion is a champion. But, you know, they also do miss. So it just it's you like just have to roll with it. Like with Van Bo Van Boning today, that was yeah. unfortunate. It's very unlike Shane to yeah. not bring that A game in it show today. Penguin asked, "Are you just doing the podcast for the event, or will you continue other um, after it's over?" Big fan of Inside Pool Plus. We love you too as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're gonna try to keep this going if we possibly can. Yeah, we want to cover as much as we can um, with both of us traveling and whatnot. It's just this works out better for us to get online and talk about what's happening. Um, big pool matches, um, big events that are coming up. You know, there's a lot coming up. Um, Oscar Dominguez um, at Hard Times with Desiree, they're having a big event at the end of the month. They're doing one pocket and they're doing nine ball. And then right after that, you have the Predator series that's starting in Arizona and Tucson. So we're going to try to help and jump on and cover as much as we can and fill you guys in. And whatever you guys um, have any questions and want to talk about, we are we're here to talk about. So basically, Nick's going to cover the west side of the United <laughs> States and I'm going to cover the east side and then we'll meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, have, a, have a good chat and hopefully you guys like it. If you guys... Any concerns or any problems or whatnot, um, comment, send messages, whatnot. Um, we're just kind of winging it and getting it going so we can at least get more people talking about everything uh, with pool, trying to get it to more ex explode more than it, it is now. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Corbin. We appreciate it. We really do. Thank you yeah, so much. Corbin says good work. Penguin, Nikon Kid, what's the next tournament that you're going to be at, sir? Um, I am heading to um, Hard Times, uh, Oscar Dominguez and Desiree's um, place at the end of the month. I'm um, doing one pocket and nine ball. And um, go out there, have some fun, get to play some pool, and get to see some old friends. That, uh, I used to live out in Sacramento uh, a couple years ago, so it's going to be fun being back and um, get to – um, play against some really top players because Oscar Dominguez and um, Hard Times, they bring nothing but good players in that um, room. So Fantastic. I haven't seen Oscar in a while since, I think, uh, wasn't he at Iron City? For yeah. The no, no, he was just at, he was just at um, for the Turkey 8-Ball, was it? at um, He was just at Griff's for the Turkey 8-Ball. I've been seeing his name on a couple of those rosters. Yeah, so he's been playing his thing. That's yeah. for sure. Yes, he has. Um, how did I get my nickname? Oh, thank you for the <laughs> thank you for that, Corbin. I was about to ask him that myself. How did you get the nickname Nikon Kid? Um, I'm about the bulge how I got mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about um, God, ten years ago, probably I went to um, Montana for a big eight ball tournament and. I do photography as well on the side. So I do pool players. I do families. I do weddings. I do pretty much anything I can get my hands on. I love taking photos. So um, I was out there with my camera equipment and I was taking photos and I was um, having some fun. And um, I went to go play in the tournament and I was doing really good. And um, the guy that I was staying with is like, you know what? Like, we don't like your name. 
we're going to call you Nikon Kid because you shoot with Nikon and, you know, you're kind of young at the time. <laughs> like, this is what they even really stuck with. And then once I came back to Arizona, it just kind of stuck with me and everybody heard about it. And they started just calling me that. And I'm like, well, how do I get away from that name? <laughs> so it kind of just stuck with me. Also, Diva, how did you meet Nick? Okay, that was an interesting story. If you guys have been following my articles here lately, I have been writing a lot more on the players. I started out a year ago writing about the venues that I was going to. Iron City Billiards out of Birmingham, Alabama, asked me to come out to their very first event. I walk into the place and I sit down. There is this um, guy with this hat on and he has this flamboyant shirt that says Q-Tech all over it. And I'm trying my best to look around him. I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm a short girl. I scream across the room and say, hey, you. How much did you pay to have your name put on the back of that shirt? He turns around and sm the biggest smile ever. And he says, I don't know. They just gave it to me. So that's pretty much how Nick and the diva got together. And we've been inseverable since best friends, uh, best high chew friends ever. <laughs> yeah. Hi chew all the way. Hi chew. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on Jeremy Jones's performance? South yes. Texas ass. Yeah. We talked about this earlier and, um, uh, I was, I mean, like, I was looking forward to watching him play, um, since I haven't seen him play in a, in a while. And, uh, um, the last time I saw him play was in Texas and he did very well. I mean, um, considering Jeremy doesn't play as much as he used to, and he had this whole, um, thing going on with the Moscone cup, you know, and the coaching, he just yeah. doesn't have the opportunity to practice as much. I, I feel that his big win was in the team event to to take a three or four um, four to one lead. Um, I felt that he played he made a really good out, and even afterwards he said he was really nervous, and you could tell he was nervous, like just by like shaking his head or you know his arm movement or whatnot. Like you could tell when somebody's really nervous at the table, and um, it's just from him not being in that spotlight. And it doesn't matter how much money you've ever played for or right. how many big tournaments you play for. This spotlight is one table and you're 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 meant to get that point and it's it's so hard and you're on so the stage pressure. all by yourself yeah and for him to get out that and make that win and then i know he struggled a little bit with skyler but that's just gonna be once he gets comfortable with the table and then he's just gonna go right into his normal um his normal speed and his normal conditions of how he plays with everything going on and this is just a woman's opinion with everything going on, and I'm sure men don't think about this as much as women do, but with Earl being removed and everything happening so quickly within the, the last 20, uh, 48 hours, um, that had to take a toll on him in general, being the, you know, being the coach and, and, and everything. It, that's a lot to have to handle and having to play as well. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of stress on a person. It is. And not just that, it's not like he was, he's playing 24 seven. Like, you know, Shane is, it's like he gets out, he plays a couple tournaments and he does right. hit balls or whatever, but I guarantee he was not hitting balls before this event going in. Cause he's all, I'm the, I'm the coach pretty much, you know, I'm going right. to sit back and help my guys out. His job then, was to make sure that they were ready. Yeah, and then now he had a jump in the and box. Now and now he's jumping playing. in. It's a lot. That's a lot to. Well, wait everybody on. has to take that in consideration. I mean, I mean, it's just something, some stuff like this happens. But you have to look at his shoes and go, okay, like well, he's not playing all the time. You know, like Shane is and like Skyler is and all. Of, so he's just jumping in and filling that in because he has to. So it's just it's a little. I feel like it might be a little bit more stressful for him because he's like. He doesn't play as much, so he's like, I feel like it's double the stress because he's, he's like, I need to get this point. I need to, so I feel like it's just a little bit more stress for him. But I feel like he handled it really good today. Absolutely. I mean, it's easy to sit there and say, well, he should have done this, he should have done that. But until you're putting that position and it's you having to make those decisions, it's a little more stressful. Uh, South Texas wants to know, uh, who would you say is the MB MVP for today, Nick? Uh, today's tough because, um, you know, Europe, even though being down 2-0, Europe played really well. Ocean played really good. 
Um, Shaw and um, David played really good. Um, you also got um, Tyler and Chris that finally kind of connected and they took down that doubles. They clicked very well. They, yes, they did click really well. And like you could see that they were actually talking to each other and they weren't just sitting there and going, okay, who's shooting the next ball or whatnot. It's very good chemistry that you need when you're playing the doubles. So um, I, I, it's so tough to say who would be the MVP for me um, today. But I could just name out the people that actually played really well overall today. And then hopefully day two, we see more of that. Right. Uh, South Texas says, do you think JJ should have waited to play on day two or three to get more practice in? Or do you think it's better he just got his match out of the way and that way he's not under as much pressure? Um, I feel that he needed to get in the box right away. If it was me and I was getting thrown in, like say I got a phone call, I'm like, hey, I have to come play. I want to jump in right away because I want to be, I want to get that environment underneath my skin. I want to get the nerves way. out of the way. And if you lose that point early, it's better than losing that point late when you're down eight to five. Or absolutely, you know, I'd hate so, to know I was the one that lost it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so I'd rather be put in that pressure and have all that pressure and all those nerves right away than, than waiting when that, that point matters and that you need that point. Right. Like I feel like going up 2-0, Shane Van Boeing was in a, like a, a free will, um, as you can speak, mode because we're up 2-0. There's nothing to lose. Okay, you lose. They're only they're only gaining a point, and we're still in the league going into Right. The, it's relieving some of the pressure off of the, our right. uh, American Superman there. <laughs> Our Captain America is taking a little pressure off of him. I agree. Does the diva actually play from Corbin? And if so, what advice would you give to fellow pool players to improve? Corbin, about seven years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer, which has left my eyesight impaired. I'm no longer able to see the edges of the balls. When the light's coming down on top of the balls, I'm seeing like massive halos. I can probably play for about 20 minutes and then it's just over. I end up with massive headaches. Um, but for me, what advice would I give? Practice, practice, practice. Um, any moment you get the opportunity to play a, um, a player that's better than you, play them. It'll be the cheapest <laughs> way to learn. Um, my thing was I ran around with Jonathan Hennessy for about um, five or six years. I've known the man for uh, over 15. Um, he threw me in the box every chance he got. <laughs> that was the only way I could learn. And I used to get the jitters really badly. So I believe uh, what Nick is saying, the best thing for Jeremy to do is just jump in there and get it over with. Because once you get your feet wet, it's a cakewalk after that. Um, from, uh, let's see, from Corbin, I would say Filler or O'Shawn for MVP on day one. Nick, what do you think about that on that side of the coin? Yeah, it's good. You know, Filler took down Shane, you know, like, but like I said, it's a race of five. Anything can happen. It's more about for me to pick MVP. I have to see at least into day three maybe day four to see who's playing well all together because like, you know, Kachi didn't play that well when we expected him to play really well. Um, Ocean did really good. Tyler did really good. Chris um, got back into that role again and then started, you know, getting in line with, um, with Tyler. So it could be really anybody's game, but the one, the team that I feel that really clicked out of all of them was, was um, Shaw and David. They clicked really well together. Fantastic. I look forward to seeing the, uh, getting the opportunity to watch it after it's all over with. Unfortunately, my job does not give me any free time. South Texas says, who do you think will be the fan's choice? I think SVB and Shaw. I think so too, because last year, you know, you remember the, com the, um, the, interview before right. the press conference you know Shaw and Shane were kind of going at it you know Shaw kind of did some digs and then Sean became um, Shaw was the MVP so that might be a big um a big show right there I thought that was a big one with um filler and um Shane right right so I, I agree um 
that's always been a, a slight rivalry there between the two. Um, I remember years ago when uh, Shane and uh, Alex Pagulion had that rivalry. It was yeah. a, a joy to watch, especially at Derby City. You could you'd see Shane and Alex in the action room going at it all night long yeah. on the table. It's a, uh, you can't discount that uh, South Dakota kid, man. He's when he's on fire, he's on fire and yes, he doesn't he give is. up. No, he lot. does not. And um, I have some need Earl. I, you know, I agree. I told people once they made that choice, I said, he might be the one that puts um, uh, Europe on tilt. Like I just really do like, one being everybody looking up to him going in and he's playing really well. Like, and then also like, you know, some of the, the verbiage that, you know, he kind of gets into, you know, um, a little bit. And I just feel that sometimes that mix just kind of blends together. And he, uh, from what Shane was saying and a couple others is that he was playing nonstop for a while and not a lot of people knew about it. And he's playing really good right now. And it's a shame that um, we can't get him. Um, and this unfortunately happened to him for it. And so for his age, the man's in incredible shape. Yeah. I mean, if anybody can, in can go a long stretch, it's Strickland. Yeah. Even at his age. I mean, come on, the man can play. <laughs> no, it's, it's totally true. It's, it's absolutely, it's crazy. I mean, at his age, I mean, it's, it's great. You know, I mean, I, I love the videos that they put together talking about Earl and, you know, leading up to it. You got, you're, you're already like after the players and the captains and everything are talking about them. It was really good. You're like, man, I want to see him perform. I want to see him get in the mix, you know, and this happens. You're just like, Oh, it was, um, it was extremely disappointing. Yes. Extremely. <laughs> Not only, I mean, it was devastating for Earl, but it, it was very disappointing for the United States and um, probably most of the European fans because they were looking forward to seeing what could possibly come out of Mr. Strickland's mouth during a match. Right. Um, South Texas says doubles. They, they think this person thinks that uh, it'll be uh, SVB, Woodard, Shaw, and Filler. What do you think? I, li I like that mix. Um, I don't... I, I really do. I like Shaw and I like Filler being being the, 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 the pick. And then also, I mean, who else are you going to pick with Shane Van Boeing, you know, other than Skyler? They have so much history together. They played so many doubles, wow. um, the Worlds and all that stuff. So um, I'd be shocked that if it wasn't Shane and, um, and Skyler. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Corbin asked, who do you think the fans – choice for doubles is going to be if you were if you were the person to pick who would you pick Nick? it's it's going to be tough because on europe you have three players that played really good together right, right. And you, you, i mean that played real i should say played really well overall day one and it's going to be one of these three together um it's going to be filler shaw or it's going to be ocean like those one of the like those are going to be teamed up whether however you look at it and i feel that like that should be the team's choice if it was me uh for the other side the usa um you have i mean i have to you have to go with history right you have to go with the performance and the people that click like i was really impressed with how much chris and tyler clicked today which was great but i guarantee you everybody wants to see shane van Boeing and skyler play together right i think you're right uh, what about the rack? What do you think? Um, what do you think about these magic racks that they're using versus the uh, old wooden racks? I mean, are you old school? Or are you up on the times with the with the magic racks? I'm a magic rack girl because I can never get those dang balls to freeze for anything. <laughs> no, I'm a, a a hit or miss. I like it. Whatever the term it is, is how I'm going to play. Like everybody's using the same rack. Everybody's using. Excuse me. You just have to figure out how to do it, like how to work with it. And I don't think it's really the rack. I think they're tight and they're getting the balls tight and everything. It's just that the felt with the new tables and the tight pockets, they are not, they're not going to make as many balls as they were last year on the break because of the fact that the pockets are tighter. So whenever the balls are hitting, when a four and a half inch pockets, they have to, those balls, that wing ball has to hit directly in that pocket or it's not going. 
And then, so basically you're pl- pretty much playing the one ball um, in the side pocket more than the wing ball because the wing ball has been hitting right on the on the point or a little bit before it or after it and it's not going. So it's just very tough when you go to four inch pockets when you're breaking. That goes for ten ball as well. I mean, it just it makes a big difference not just on your play of running out, but in pocketing balls. But their break is huge too. Personally, I like the fact that it's a little more difficult. I mean, these are champions. Each one of them is a champion in their own right. Uh, Reinhold's been traveling um, overseas here lately, going to different tournaments as well as, you know, the Europeans. That's what they do. They travel and they play in some of these more difficult tournaments. Um, I think personally, the more these boys get the opportunity to travel overseas to play some of these top players, they will eventually get better. Um, As far as, um, you know, I like the fact that the table's tight. I do. Because that gives us something to to watch. I don't want to watch them all running out. One side, it being one-sided. It's just, it's boring. No, totally. And Alex Pagaline actually has been saying it for a long time. And if you go to my boy, Joey Ryan, uh, Pool Player Podcast, and look up um, Alex Pagaline's interview that he had with them, he said that if the pro tour of any sort tighten their pockets and make them four-inch pockets, you're going to see a totally different um, champion and the best players win these events because the tighter pockets makes a huge difference when you're, when you're playing rotation. Uh, we talk, um, South Texas, we talked about the gray felt. Um, it's a, it's just, it's just, everything's different right now. Um, going from tighter pockets, changing the color felt, your eyes have to adjust to it. Yeah. It's a lighter color than um, the blue is. But um, you're both playing on it. You both have to get used to it. And it's just it's something that's new. And we're going to see if they're going to stick with it for going into next year. Or um, they might change it up. So, But it's just something that the players all have to just adjust to. Penguin asks, do you think we will see in the future some women pros coming back to play again in the Moscone Cup? So, out here in Arizona... We have, which, which um, it's called, um, we have, um, similar to the Moscone Cup, but we have six players. So we have the Swirl Cup, we do the east side of town versus the west side of town. Um, there's a Fargo cap, but we, on the sixth player, we add a woman player. And it brings so much more to the, the game. Because the women, man, they could come with it and they could take away some points. You're like, oh my God, what just happened? And it's exciting. And then same with we have Arizona versus Vegas. That happens every year. And we have a woman that's on that team as well. And I just feel that adding a woman could extremely just change everything with um, being part of um, the Moscone Cup. Hill Brothers comments says, should be a separate Moscone Cup for the ladies. I agree. I think the women should have their own. If the men have theirs, I think the women should. I mean, you have people like Allison Fitcher. You also have uh, Jeanette Lees trying to, trying to get back out there. I saw her in Aiken um, back a few months ago. Um, she, You could tell she got tired easily. But she got out there and she did her best and she played her heart out. And there is nobody's going to say anything bad about that lady. She she is a champion. Yeah, no, and there's a lot of women that are out there playing. I mean, you can look up on Fargo right now. Beretta's but, out there too. But this is the this is the thing. Like when you talk about, it, is it going to be just Europe player Europe players versus U.S. players? Because the top, like, if you look at the females in the Fargo, the top like ten or. Uh, 15 are all overseas um, right. player and they're all over 700. Right. So it's just, it's a totally different game overseas than it is in the U S and it's always been like that. And it always will be like that until stuff changes out here to how they have it being trained out there. Right. But you can have a women's Moscone cup and you can have a, um, you can have two separate and have it like one in the middle of the year, one at the end of the year, you know, like they do. I mean, it's just right. there's a lot that they could do, and they could pull a lot of women. Or you can just combine it and just say, you know, top five or whatever from each or even six. If you want to add more, you know, you can change it up. There's just a lot to do, and that's actually more promoting the pool um, game as well. 
Right. Absolutely. I was in, um, I was asked to cover an event in um, Springfield, Missouri, and they did their own Moscone Cup style event with several teams. And some of the teams had some of the top ladies in that area. The um, It gave me a new insight on how difficult it is to put one of these together. I would have never thought so, but it's, it's, it's really a lot of work. A lot of work. Yes, uh, you know, Match Room does a fantastic job considering how difficult it is to put one of those events together. Yeah, we do. We do. I mean, like I said, we do the one in Arizona versus Vegas. We do the one in Arizona where it's West Side versus East Side Town. But it's a one prize. Like everybody enters. The sponsors add money. The pool hall adds money. But there's only a first place. Like there's no money for second place. Like you win, you get the champion trophy, you get your names on it, and your your bragging rights yeah. for a year. But it's just, it's so much pressure, like to be in that environment. And I know I'm not in that environment in the Moscone Cup, but these are just played on one table. You're streaming everything, all the pressure. So I can feel a little bit for how Jeremy Jones is getting in the box finally and playing, you know? So um, it's just, it's a very, very different environment than what anybody is used to. It's a lot of pressure. Yes. You have a lot of people watching you. Every mistake you make, I mean, you saw what Carl did this today. Yeah. <laughs> but they're Europeans. We just let them do that. <laughs> yeah, it, just, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, it happens. It's just that you have to just keep on going. Right, right. Anyone else have any more questions for the diva and the Nikon kid? <laughs> yes, sir, Corbin. Money, money, money. It's always about the money. The dollar signs. The dollar signs. Well, the Nikon kid and I will try to come back here tomorrow around 7 o'clock the same time unless something interrupts us. But we will definitely make sure we post that on both of our pages and on Nick's um, fan page. I also have a group page called Inside America's Pool Rooms with Tracy Lerma. So if you guys haven't join please do so nick's gonna plug his page too right quick and then we're gonna go through our sponsors go yes, for it yes. Nick. um i appreciate everything that um inside pool magazine is doing for us and um, letting us get out there and talk about um the moscone cup and even after the moscone cup everything's gonna kind of like we're gonna jump on we're gonna talk about big events and all that um all that good stuff so everything's going to be um, going and getting everything started. And it just, you know, one step at a time and just bear with us. Like we're just getting into it and um, I'm pretty sure every day it'll be a little better. There'll be more to talk about. Um, I hope you guys, you know, jump on and you guys tune in, you guys ask questions and whatnot. We always like to give feedback and we always want feedback as well with everything that we're doing. We're going to have a couple of guest speakers throughout the um the rest of the moscone cup as well so just stay tuned and um, we'll see who else we can get on here and chit chat with us and talk about um the lovely game that we love um i thank my sponsors uh q tech for one of them for everything they do and um everything they've been doing for me and continue doing for me they're awesome and uh like i said shane von boeing let's get it going for the um team usa um my 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 good guy uh, Mike Gwynn, he's been with me since the beginning. Um, Realty One Group, the guy does everything with houses. And Rick Smith, um, you might see him out in Vegas for a little while, or um, he was going for um, BCA and everything for a good. Takes great pictures, does it all out there. Um, Melina Mike, Mister Knit, um, my man, he is. He if you don't have him on your Facebook, man, you guys need him on your Facebook. Look him up. He knows everything. He gives you all the information. Also, his other page is Windows, Windows open. open. Yes, and he advertises and he shows and gives you guys all the information that you guys want on this game that we love. Um, another one is uh, One PKT. Look out for him. Melina, Mike, Joey, Ryan, my boy Travis. Um, you guys are all awesome. I appreciate everything you guys do for me and. Um, I just hope that this all continues and we can just keep on growing the sport that we love. Thank you so much, Nick. Yeah, thank you. And 
We will see you guys all tomorrow, hopefully a little bit sooner than um, than later. Um, and maybe we can get some of these bugs out and we don't sound so lame. Yeah, and we can get some more people on, maybe some people that are actually at the Moscone Cup and um, talk about the environment and all the everything that they've been through. So um, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And um, like I said, share, share away, stay tuned, follow our pages, and we will be sharing tomorrow. So go Team USA. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tracy with Inside Pool Magazine. They call me the diva. I'm going to get in just a slight bit on why they call me the diva, and then I'm going to go down my list of sponsors. I was given the name the diva in New Orleans, Louisiana this year. I was down there covering the Buffaloes event. I went down to downtown New Orleans with a group of women, Julie Cone. Um, it's Julie Melman Cone. Uh, also, Ming, the Empress Ng, and two other ladies. We were shopping and Ming walks past a t-shirt that said Diva across the front. She giggled and she said, this is your new name. And that's how I got my name. Guys. <laughs> Nothing special to it. <laughs> I had on a dress that was, that looked like a wedding gown. And I had a lady ask me for my dress. She was going to pay me for it. And I'm like, I can't walk down Bourbon Street naked. And, yeah. you know, she goes, you need this shirt. It says Diva across the front. I said, great. Perfect. <laughs> anyway, out. so I'm going to run down that list of sponsors. Enterprise Car Rentals. Guys, if you're needing a car, if you're traveling anywhere and you need a vehicle to get you back and forth or you're flying out and you need a vehicle, uh, get on um, Enterprise Car Rentals. And I will post that link up on Inside Pool Mag. For you guys, you'll get a small discount, and that also helps me and Nick. Also, Hilton Brand Hotels and Marriott Brand Hotels, they've been making sure the Diva has a fantastic place to stay and a safe place to stay. Also, Pool Hall at Gear, Mr. Dittmar. Steve Dittmar, I appreciate everything you do for me, sir. He's been keeping this Diva dressed to success in Pool Hall at Gear. All right, guys, we are going to sign out, and I'm probably forgetting somebody, and I don't want anyone to be upset. <laughs> this yeah. is just a rough crash on here. So, guys, we're definitely going to get better. So, yes. if we're a little bit lame tonight, we're always going to have a crash and burn on the first startup. So, we will definitely get better. Make sure you guys tune in and come with those questions. We will make sure that we let you um get in on any of this conversation and in the future will we be pulling one of you out of the chat to join us on the live stream so keep vigil and you guys cheer your teams on either it's go euro or it's go U usa either it's way usa it's all the way <laughs> Let's go. All right, guys, go. Have a great night <laughs> thanks nick i'll see you later all right bye guys have a good one bye guys <laughs>